Hi, sixth graders. This video is on dividing multi-digit whole numbers and decimal numbers. So please make sure that you find this, the next blank spot in your notebook and label the top of your page with this title so you know what your notes are or what you're taking notes on. And our learning target is being able to use the standard algorithm to divide multi-digit numbers as well as decimal numbers. We talked in our multiplying video about what an algorithm is. Remember, an algorithm is a rule or steps to follow to solve a certain type of equation. Quotient is the answer to a division problem. So you want to make sure you know that word and maybe have that written down and underlined in your notebook. What is happening when we divide numbers? So typically when we divide numbers, like let's say we have 24 and we divide it by 2, we know that 24 divided by 2 is going to be 12. So typically when we divide numbers, the answer is going to get smaller because we are dividing it into a certain amount of groups. When we have a decimal point in one of the numbers or when we're dividing by a decimal, that actually means that we're dividing it into more groups than the amount of whole numbers we have. If we're dividing it into groups of one half, that's gonna be more than dividing it into groups of two, for instance, or um, something like that. So that is actually going to change um, the value of our solution. The opposite of multiplication we talked about was repeated addition. So with division, um, it is basically just repeated subtraction. So 15 divided by 3 equals 5 is the number of times you can subtract 3 from 15 before you get to 0. So if you look on our number line here and we start at 15 right here, we count how many times we subtract 3. So minus 3 gets us to 12, minus 3 again gets us to 9, minus 3 again gets us to 6 then to 3, then to 0, and then we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's how we would use repeated subtraction to represent division. And in other words, 15 divided by 3 equals 5. So when we do not want to sit and do subtraction or repeated subtraction with our large numbers, if we had 356 divided by 4 and we want to see how many times we can take away 4, we're going to be sitting there for a pretty long time with a pretty long um, number line. So that's when we would use long division. Again, I know that you have all learned different strategies in elementary school of division, but I do want you to practice the long division strategy. So if you're not sure of it or you forget it, definitely write this down. Either way, write this down and do this problem with me, or if you got it, you can just go ahead, check your answer when I'm done. So 356 divided by 4 the first number is always going to go inside our dividing box, and the second number, what we're dividing by, always goes on the outside. So now we need to know how many times does 4 go into 356? Well, if we first ask ourselves, can 4 go into 3? It cannot, but it can go into 35, and it can go into it 8 times. So 8, we put an 8 right above the 5 and keep it nice and neat. 8 times 4 is 32, then we do 35 minus 32 is 3, 4 cannot go into 3, bring down the 6, 4 can go into 36 9 times, 9 times 4 is 36, subtract, get 0, and we're done. So we know that 356 divided by 4 equals 89. Then we have 3825 divided by 9. 9 goes into 38 4 times. 4 times 9 is 36. 38 minus 36 is 2. 9 can't go into 2. We bring down the other 2. 9 goes into 22 2 times. 2 times 9 is 18. 22 minus 18 is 4 bring down this 5. We always keep going until we've brought down every number over here. 9 goes into 45 5 times. 5 times 9 is 45. 
subtract, we get zero, and that's how we know that we're done. So 3,825 divided by nine equals 425. Here's our steps that go along with dividing or with our long division algorithm. So if you write this down in your notebook, I've really condensed them. So um, step one, you're gonna divide, then step two, you multiply, then we subtract, then we drop down the next digit, and then we repeat, which makes sense as you're going step by step through the long division. But write that down, box it, just like you boxed the steps for multiplying. So if you feel comfortable, I would like you to pause and try these two problems on your own in your notebook and then come back and check. Otherwise, watch me do a couple more problems. So 1,856 divided by 32. 32 cannot go into 1 or 18, but it can go into 185. And I could sit and try to figure out exactly, but I do know that 32 goes into 185 five times. I should have wrote that down just a little bit. 32 times 5 is 160. 185 minus 60 is 25. And then I bring down the 6. 32 can go into 256 eight times. And it goes into that exactly eight times. 8 times 32 is 256. So then we have 0 and our answer would be 58. Okay, and then we have 19,092 divided by 74. I know that 74 cannot go into 1 or 9, but it can go into 192 times. So 2 times 74 is 148. I know that 190 minus 148 is 42. Bring down the 9. I know that 74 can go into 429 five times because 74 times 5 is 370. 429 minus 370 is going to be 59. Bring down the 2. And then 74 times 8 is 592. So 8 times 74, 592. And then that brings us to 0. And our answer would be 258. All right, two more that I would like you to try in your notebook. I am going to pause, or I'm gonna stop talking for about three seconds, and then, um, so pause me during that time, and then unpause me, and I am just going to write the answer. If your answer agrees with mine, awesome. If it does not, then go back and see if you can find your own mistake. So the answer for 648 divided by 12 is 54 and the answer for 2934 divided by 9 is 326. Okay we have a couple thinking slides now just like from our multiplying slide the other night. So I want you to write these things down and then I just want you to think about these and try to guess or think about what the answer might be. Remember I don't expect you to be totally correct but I do want to know your thinking and your thoughts on this. So if you can divide 93 divided by three, which I'm sure you all can, and whatever that answer is, then I want you to think about, well then what would the quotient of 93 divided by 30 be? So divided by three and then 30. And then what do you think would happen if we divided 93 by three tenths? So would the answers be getting bigger or smaller? And what is the difference between, are some gonna have a decimal or some not gonna have a decimal? So you write down any of your thinking on any of those questions. And then lastly, let's look at this. If we can divide 125 divided by 25, so do this in your notebook, figure out what the answer is, and then see if you could figure out what would make the most sense if you divided it by two and five tenths. So you would probably have the same numbers or the same digits, but possibly a decimal or something else added into your answer. And then what about 12 and a half divided by two and a half? How would those decimal points change the solutions from the answers above? So write down your thinking, write down what your thoughts are, 
maybe some guesses of what the answers would be. Remember, don't use a calculator because I just want you to think about it and then we're going to discuss it more in depth in class um, tomorrow. And then that's all I have. So make sure you look back over your notes. Make sure you rewatch anything. And then don't forget to put these notes in your backpack so that you have them for the next class. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.